In this video, I'm going to show you how to use your iPad as a second display, how you can improve your productivity with an iPad, and also how it can save you money. And towards the end of the video, I've got a bit of a surprise for you that should hopefully lay to rest all of those stories that you can't make your iPad into a, a production beast. That's a little bit later on. If this is the first of my videos you've seen, my name's David and I make videos about Apple gear every week because I use a lot of Apple gear and I love making videos and telling you about how I'm using that Apple gear. Now, the iPad Pro was the first proper iPad that I'd owned. I'd had a couple of iPad minis, but I'd never used them seriously and regularly. The iPad Pro was the first iPad that I'd try to use in my daily workflow. I didn't know how I was going to get on with it. I'd heard all of these bad stories about iPad OS and how terrible it was to use, and I wanted to make my own judgments for it. So when I bought it this summer, I wasn't sure if it would fit into my daily workflow. I wasn't sure if I'd enjoy using it, but quickly, I did. It's a different way of working, and I think that is what brought something fresh to me. It was just a different and refreshing way of working. When you pick up an iPad, you know you're going to be working slightly differently with it. I don't ever think it's going to replace a Mac. I never expected it to replace a Mac. I want it to work alongside the Mac, which it's doing ever so well. And it's had its limitations, but nothing I haven't found workarounds for. And in some instances, the iPad is clearly better if you're thinking about taking notes, drawing, even something like Netflix. Say you're going on a long journey on a plane and you want to download some movies offline, you can do that on the iPad. You can't do that on a Mac. In some respects, the iPad is just better. Some of the best apps for tablets are still only available on iPad. Two comes to mind, Ulysses that I use for writing all the time and Procreate. Both of those are only available on iPad. I've got nothing against Samsung and the S9 and the S10, they're great devices, they're great tablets, they're great screens, they're great to look at. But the iPad, because of the amount of people that use iPad, developers get behind iPad and there are just better apps available for it. I think that's fairly undeniable. Things really started to change for the iPad, not just with Apple Silicon, but with that port, that Thunderbolt USB-C 4 port, things really started to change. You can now attach an SSD to it. You don't have to pay eye-watering amounts of money for Apple storage any longer. You can attach a, a cheap, an inexpensive SSD to it. And not only SSDs, I can connect a camera to it. As a creator, I can connect a camera to it and it just opens up a whole world of new possibilities. And of course, there's the Magic Keyboard as well. Now, I'm not here to defend the price of the Magic Keyboard. It is ridiculously expensive, but it is brilliant. And as good as that keyboard is though, sometimes I want to just take the iPad out and just appreciate what a beautiful device is to hold and use. When you take it out, it's just four and a half millimeters thick, you realize, what a design engineering feat it really is. And it's beautiful to hold and it's beautiful to use. It's the best display I have ever owned. And I'll be coming onto the display side of it in just a minute. But if I've got days where I'm coming into the studio and I know I'm just going to be doing admin work, say accounts work, emailing, following up on sponsor leads, replying to your message on the videos, that kind of work, I will always reach for the iPad. And if I'm writing, I will always reach for the iPad. And as this business grows, I'm finding I'm using the iPad more and more. As the channel grows, so does the business behind it. And that's when I began looking for solutions to help me run all of my business interests seamlessly, quickly, and efficiently from just one place. In short, I needed a way to follow up on and never overlook a potential lead again. And that's when I came across this, Bitrix24, which is an all-in-one platform that helps you collaborate with your team, manage tasks, communicate with customers and leads, and manage a customer database. With Bitrix24, you can choose to communicate via email, telephone, web forms, live chat, widgets, or even Messenger. You can pick an existing template or create a completely custom CRM form using a web form builder, which is the ultimate lead generation for any business. From there, you can quickly create callback forms, feedback forms, self-registration forms, or bespoke custom forms block by block. You can also create ad campaigns for all your social media platforms from within Bitrix24. There's a direct integration with Instagram where you can provide a native shopping experience to your customers, managing all interactions, including payments directly inside Bitrix24. In the control center, you can simply and easily add your existing email accounts, whether it's a Gmail, Outlook, or Exchange account, for example, to efficiently manage all your points of contact with clients, customers, and team members. It's an omni-channel CRM system where every interaction is transformed into a potential deal with the complete history of all interactions automatically stored within the system. You can plan, start, and create your campaign to your exact needs here. It's that simple. In short, Bitrix24 
has made it simple to stay in touch with everyone and follow up on every lead from one simple, friendly interface. You can connect with your Facebook, WhatsApp or Instagram and use Apple Messages to communicate with others for Apple devices, all inside Bitrix24. All the information and chats are automatically transferred to and saved in the CRM. And it works both ways. Send your responses to emails, reply through messages or social media messages directly from the CRM. Streamline your daily communications with clients and operate all the channels from a single CRM system. It's available online or as a free mobile app, which will have you covered at every single step of your campaign. You'll find everything you need to stay in touch is there in Bitrix24, and you can check the link in the description to learn more and register to get a free copy today. I mentioned writing a moment ago. This keyboard is just so comfortable to use. I don't know if it's because it's so thin and low to the desk. There's no edge to it. There's no harsh edges digging into your wrists. I'm not a touch typist, but it's balanced. It's clicky enough. It's got good feedback. It's backlit. And if you can make somebody like me into a reasonably quick typist, and I'm also more accurate on here, I think that says it all. As I said, it is expensive, but it is a great accessory. And everything combined with the Apple Pencil, the Magic Keyboard, and that port, it just elevates the iPad into levels of productivity that I'd never thought imaginable. So these stories that I've heard that the iPad can't be productive, I don't really buy into. Then we get into the point of multitasking. I'd always heard that you can't multitask on an iPad. I don't really buy it. I think a good example for me is when I'm writing and I need something open, say Safari, to reference things. Well, with Split View, I can do just that. I can have two apps open and distraction free, and I can work meaningfully, productively on this iPad. With that keyboard, I'm doing all the work that I could possibly want to do. So that to me is multitasking. I don't know how much more you need to do in a multitasking environment, but that is getting my job done. That is helping me to earn my living. I don't often bring out the term the ecosystem because everybody else uses it, but that's not to deny that it's fantastic. Universal control was one of those brilliant moments. It really was. And when you've got an iPad and universal control and just using one mouse to drag across different devices, it's a match made in heaven. And of course, it's because of universal control that you can then use and control your iPad from your Mac. That's fine. But I remember I said about using it as a second display with Sidecar, often overlooked with a couple of clicks I'm showing you here, you can connect your iPad up and have it as a second display. It's doubling up. If you've got a Mac and you need a second display, yes, I love my studio display, but it's 1,500 pounds for basically a display only. Yes, it's got a webcam. Yes, it's got some speakers, but it's basically a display. And I'll tell you what, as much as I love that display, it's not as good as a display on this iPad. It just isn't. I color grade and check every video you see on that iPad. Why? Because it's the most reliable reference that I've got. It is a fantastic, fantastic tablet to work on. It, the colors have to be seen to be believed. What they've done with the screen this year, it's just second to none. I mentioned a short while ago at the top of the video that we were going to talk about saving you money, which I think I've done. I was going to talk about how to use it as a second display, which we've done. But I've also mentioned that there was going to be a little bit of a surprise, a little bit of a kicker. Well, here is that surprise. This entire video has been shot on iPhone. Now, I know that's nothing new. Stick with me, honestly. In front of me is the 16 Pro Max. There is the 15 Pro Max, and that's the 14 Pro. The two Maxes are recording in ProRes Log, and they're recording directly to SSDs. The 14 Pro obviously doesn't record in Log, but it is recording in ProRes. That, luckily, has got a terabyte of storage on it, so I'm fine with that. Getting the file off is going to be painful because, of course, that was still lightning on that phone. So I'm shooting using the Final Cut camera app on these three iPhones. But here's the deal. I've recorded this entire video through those iPhones onto the iPad using Final Cut for iPad. And they say you can't be productive on an iPad. Everything you've seen has been recorded in and edited on this iPad. For full transparency, I used an SSD to edit from because at the very end, I had to export the file over to the Mac because we haven't got plugins on the iPad yet. So for instance, those call to actions, the click now and click for more fresh content. We haven't got those plugins on the iPad yet, but that's the only thing I did on the Mac. Everything else was edited on here. The audio, which I recorded in Adobe Audition, I put that onto the hard drive, I synced it with the video in the iPad, and it just worked. Now, I wasn't as quick, but then again, this was the biggest project that I've ever edited on the iPad, and I was able to do it. The video you are seeing now was completely shot on iPhone and edited on iPad. Surely that has to put to rest that this iPad can't be a production beast. I'd love to know though, how are you using your iPads? 
How hard are you pushing your iPad? What are you doing on them? Are you a Procreate user, a Photoshop user? Speaking of Photoshop, even the thumbnail you saw for this video that hopefully you liked, hopefully you clicked on, that was edited in Lightroom and in Photoshop on this iPad. Now, it's not to say that the iPad hasn't got its faults. Sometimes the keyboard, for whatever reason, just jumps around and the cursor moves without any input from me. But most of the problems I've come across are to do with apps, and that's nothing to do with the iPad itself. That's to do with developers. Developers need to catch up with where the iPad currently sits and how good it can be. Then, if we get the apps catching up with the power of iPad, we've got a perfect storm. One of the worst apps for me is YouTube Studio. It's awful on the iPad for some reason. But that, I say, that's not the fault of the iPad. That's the fault of Google and of YouTube. The iPad has proven to be, very nearly, an unbreakable device. It is so good to use. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing and it's multi-faced. I can do different things on it. I can enjoy it just to sit down on the sofa and watch some content on Netflix if I want to, on Apple TV. But then I can bring it here, record and edit a full 4K video with three cameras and audio. To me, that's a multitasking and hardworking device. But as I said, let me know how hard you are pushing your iPad. I think we need to celebrate how good iPad can be. Yes, they can get expensive to buy, but if you use it wisely, it can actually save you money and double up in so many ways and fit into your workflow in so many different ways. Just be creative with it. Just think about how to use an iPad and get the most out of it. If you've enjoyed this video about the iPad, by the way, there's one on the screen right now showing you when I took it out for the day and just put it to work. See what you think of that video. I think you might enjoy it.